Hello guys. This is, in this video we're going this is going to be a short video. It's on the cell, it's part five. We're only going to cover the part of the specification that says chromosome maps. Okay. So let's start right away. First of all, we're going to see what is a gene. A gene is part of a DNA molecule. It is a specific nucleotide sentence that codes for just one polypeptide. So, we have said that the nucleotides have a, a nitrogen-containing base. And all the other part of its nucleotide, a DNA nucleotides, is the same. So, when we are going want to write a, a DNA sequence, we don't write all the structure of a nucleotide, we just write the letter of the base that this nucleotide contains, because we know that all the rest of the um, structure is the same. So by doing that, we simplify that. So if I write A, A, let's say this is a DNA sequence, okay, C, T, A, G, G, a couple thousand bases here, and then C, C, T, A. And they're complementary below. Do you remember the complementary base theory? Let's say this is the three accents, this is the five accents, and we said that they are at opposite ends, therefore the other chain will have the three accent end here, and the five accent end here, and now we'll have T, A, G, G. The base is the com complementary C, C, T, A, G, and T, T, T. This is right, a sequence that I have chosen from a DNA molecule. Okay, if I tell you that this, let me change the color. Where is it? Anyway. If I tell you that this sequence here codes the, uh, the polypeptide chain alpha in the hemoglobin molecule, then this is the gene. Let me write that down. The gene that codes the polypeptide chain alpha. Does it code the whole protein? No, because one gene codes one polypeptide chain. And there are proteins, like hemoglobin, which contain more than one polypeptide. Okay, so it contains the alpha polypeptide the, uh, and the beta polypeptide. Two alpha and two beta polypeptide chains. Therefore, if this gene could, um, codes the polypeptide chain A, Alpha doesn't mean it codes the hemoglobin protein, okay? And it's a, a part of the a DNA molecule, it's not the whole DNA molecule, it's just part. The DNA molecule has many, many genes. Okay, what is a mutation? If I change the nucleotide sequence in a gene, how that can happen? I can add some bases, some nucleotides, I can subtract remove some nucleotide, or I can change the nucleotide, for instance, the nucleotide with the base T, I could replace it with the base A, or C, or G. Okay, and these are changes in the nucleotide sequence. This may result in an altered polypeptide. Later, we will see what, when it can, what type of mutation leads to a different polypeptide and what kinds does not. But now I want you to know that mutation is changes in the sequence and the, in the nucleotide sequence. Okay, what are alleles? Alleles are different um, variants of the same gene. That is what? Let's say I have the gene that codes uh, for the eye color. There are many alleles in this gene. There is 
the gene the allele that codes blue color blue eye color that is the allele that contains um let's say um gray eye color etc different eye color okay they contain they are responsible for the same disease, but in different way also they are in the same locus of gene is the position on a chromosome I have the, these genes alleles have the same locus that means that they are found on the same place on the chromosome one chromosome can contain one gene you can for instance have gene in one chromosome have the gene for I don't know gray eyes and blue eyes in one chromosome that's impossible in two chromosomes you can because we're on the same locus of the same autosomal chromosomes we will see later what that is Now, the alleles, oh, you said that. DNA molecules now can be enormous. A human cell has 46 DNA molecules during G1, that because it, um, it you know, during the S phase, it doubles its DNA. It has how many? 92 DNA molecules. All together, during G1 again, it has 3 times 10 in the 9th power. That's many base pairs long. That means 6 times 10 in the 9th power bases that means nucleotides okay this all this all this codes 3% the 3% of this codes for protein okay and the function of the remainder is uncertain now the genome is all the DNA in the nucleus of the cell of an organism it's called the genome of the organism uh, in 2001 the human genome project was Finished. What was the pro the aim of this project? Was to determine the sequence of nucleotides base pairs that make up the human DNA, all the nucleotides in your DNA. And it was completed. We know now the, the full nucleotide sequence of your DNA. Now and then identifying and mapping all the genes of the human genome from both a functional and physical standpoint. First of all, let's say the word identifying. That means I want to know what genes exist in your genome and what is their function now? What is the function of this gene? How does it help your body? And what's physical? Okay. Now mapping is to find where on the chromosome is a gene, to find the locus of a gene that is mapping. Okay. Now, chromosome mapping is the assignment of genes to specific locations on a chromosome. Uh, I believe you should read a little bit more about that chromosome mapping, and I've put a link here. I will also put it in the description of the video below, so make sure to check that out. Then, uh, how does this project, the Human Genome Project, contribute? Why do we need that? Hmm? Let's see how to contribute. First of all, with these programs we can study, we studied the organization and function of the human genome. So when the program finished, we knew the areas of the genome which code protein. What are those? The genes. The areas that regulate gene expression and areas with uncertain function. Then we can also develop methodology to diagnose and treat diseases. How can we do that? Because by identifying the locus and the sequence of genes that are mutated and are responsible for many diseases. Okay, study the evolution of the human genome. For this purpose, there are projects in progress that to determine the sequence of nucleotides of other species in order to find the, revolution, the evolutionary relationships between them. That is what? Let's say I. Um, we try to find the evolutionary relationships relations yes between the chimpanzee and the human how do we do that we take each genome we try to map it okay to find the sequence of nucleotides and then we compare it to the human what are the the differences and what are the features in common okay and last is for mass production of products with the methods of biotechnology. 
based on any specific genes. These genes can be used in pharmaceuticals, in the industry, medicine, agriculture, and animal husbandry. Um, I believe that's all for this video. Now, uh, I forgot to create um, a, a slide, so I'm just going to write that down okay, here. Don't look at the word genes. I want to tell you just a few stuff that I forgot to see in this video, since it's sad to make another video just for those. Um, let's choose the black one. There are 46 chromosomes in the human body during meta metaphase again. These are pairs. You've got 23 and 23. The chromosomes in the human bodies are with pairs. That is what? That there are chromosomes that have alleles of the same gene. So let's say this chromosome here has the same what? The same size with this one. And in the same locus that is here and here, because these are sister chromatids which are identical, they have genes which are alleles. For instance, here, in this Loki, I may have the blue eye color. Okay, and in this Loki, I may have the gray, for instance. Okay, these are called homologous pair gray. These are called homologous pairs of chromosomes. Homologous. Okay. And they contain the same genes, actually genes, that are responsible for the same characteristic that may give it differently. Okay. And so we've got 23 and 23. Out of this 23, and this 23, there are 22 that are same for men Woman. That means out of the 46, 44 are the same, men and women. They don't have um, differences between the two sexes. But the, the last pair, there is one more pair, that's 23 pairs, actually. Okay. There's one pair which has two chromosomes, XX, in woman, in normal woman, and XY in man. Okay, the presence of the Y chromosomes determines per male, while the absence of the Y chromosome determines, gives the female. They are responsible for the sex of the organism. Okay, this is all I want to say. Um, in the file below I will add this uh, slide and I'm sorry for presenting it to you like that right now. Thank you for watching the video guys. Bye bye.